So this is our hay box. It's a way of dramatically cutting the amount of fuel that you use. So if you're running on, uh, you know, bottled gas or well, any gas really, I suppose, um, electricity, you know, for uh, cooking, it, it adds up, it's expensive. You can't cook anything in this, but a lot of things you can. Um, we do roasts in it, like a pot roast, uh, any soup, stew, anything at all like that. Rice it's really good for making stock, and I've been on a fraction of the fuel. Um, I, soup's really good, but you know, it takes a long simmer. And you know, that can be what, a couple of hours easily for a decent soup. Whereas here, you boil it once, you put it in the box, and you can come back to this five, six hours later, and that's still too hot to eat. You know, it, it's still cooking the whole time. Um, it's, yeah, couldn't be simple. It's nothing complicated. You can buy commercial ones, um, but they're quite expensive. So that is um, uh, camping mat insulation. You know, the stuff that, uh, closed cell mat. When you get a closed cell mat, they're like seven and a half feet long. So it's crazy carrying that around. So the bit that you cut off the end, that's what's been used for this. Um, I've had a few of them over the years. So that is just an insulated pot cover just to fit inside it. And that's it. And this takes a 28 centimeter aluminium Dutch oven, Jamaican pot, Dutchy, various names. Very inexpensive to buy. They're really not difficult uh, to get hold of. And I mean, it's a really thick quality pot. That's why I chose it. Um, so the metal itself will hold a certain amount of heat. I don't know what a difference it makes, to be honest. You know, at the point that it goes in here, it's going to cook anyway. If you've got a thin walled steel pot, it'll still make the difference. But this, I also, we got this originally for camping. Uh, so we'd save on uh, gas. So I went for, built it around this, because this you can also bake inside and do all sorts. It's basically a very cheap aluminium Dutch oven. Uh, but this, the actual box itself, I mean, it's had some heavy use. The edges of it, you can see, I did have a little um, rubberized cover on that. It's come away over time. It still works perfectly well. So this is a very basic um, plywood box. I made sure it was a good and square. You know, you you can work around it, but the, the squarer and the truer things are the better for this, because obviously you don't want any air leaks when you close it up. Uh, it's lined with 50 mil of uh, Celotex insulation, you know, Kingspan, Quintherm, there's various brands. It's uh, fairly toxic stuff to produce environmentally. Um, but one day I was going through a uh, former tip and some of the fly tips, a little bit there, you know, tons of it. So I took it. Um, it's only going to go in, well, at best end up in landfill from that point. So might as well make use of it. So this has got 50 mil all round inside. And then I've cut triangles out of it and filled in the corners just to fill that in, leaving a gap all the way around. And then I've lined the whole thing again with a uh, closed cell mat. Um, and I, yeah, you can see I've put a couple of little strips in. Just where there's voids, I've filled them in. It's still going to work pretty well regardless. So yeah, basically, oh, and the top edge is a closed cell mat. And that's made out of a single sheet that I cut the centre out of and used elsewhere just so there's no gaps in it. But really, I mean, it, that, again, I'm not sure what a difference that makes particularly. And between, between this one and the one that's in the lid, if you wanted to really go to town on it, I mean, it fits perfectly, but I put it in in case it didn't. So I could put a weight on top uh, and that I just compress it ever slightly and give us a really good seal. Because that's really the only place you're going to lose insulation. I mean, this Salatex insulation is amazingly it's better than anything you're going to get in like a cool box or anything like that it's great stuff so yeah you bring your soup or whatever to a boil now you want to it needs to be full of liquid you want to get as much thermal mass as possible into this because all you're going to do is you're going to seal it inside the heat sorry inside the insulation um and it's at that point it's like, like a giant thermos now you can buy commercial ones of this that actually are basically you know big thermos flasks yeah my concern with them is if you put a tiny hole you know it's your vacuum gone that's completely useless that's good for nothing this thing i mean it's hard to imagine what would break it um but if anything did it's fixable you know you it's not a problem it's a bit of glue it's a bit of insulation it's gonna pretty much work um so yeah you want to get it as full as possible so it's good for good batches of stuff um so yeah make up a load put it in here then i put this, this is just some uh, it's recycled, um, uh, you know, pot bottle, plastic bottle, uh, recycled insulation. 
uh, that they sell for insulating vehicles, vans and stuff like that because it doesn't absorb any moisture so you don't get funky smells and stuff. Um, but I just had a scrap of that left over. And then this, this needs gluing in. And I've never done it. But yeah, uh, that again is just there. Basically it's a spacer to make up the difference here of the lid. So with it glued in, it'll be a lot less hassle. So maybe I'll get it done one of these days. So yeah, straight off the heat, straight in, lid on. You can go away and leave that. It's like an energy free slow cooker. I mean, we do um, entire roasts in this quite often. That's most of what we use it for. So I'll take a pot, <laughs> this pot, literally, I'll put uh, five pound in value, you know, five of chicken into it, pack a load of veg around it, you know, potatoes, carrots. You don't even need to chop them up. You only cut them just so they fit more evenly around it. I mean, you can put things in the cavity if you want, you know, when you're roasting it, that's an issue. It's not a problem with this. Uh, you know, so get as much mass as you can cover it with water or stock, what I generally use, um, bring that to a boil, and even with a whole chicken, I give it about a 10 minute simmer, just to give it, make sure everything is good and hot. You wanna make sure that the, the cavity inside the chicken isn't um, full of air. You know, you wanna get as much mass as you can into this, you know, liquid. Uh, get it all to a good steady simmer. So the whole, you know, and after a little while, the top's good and hot as well. Um, put it in here, you can come back to this in five, six hours. Uh, and it's still above 75 degrees, which is, you know, still in the range of technically still cooking. You know, it, it's um, a great bit of kit. You don't have to go the whole hog and do this. Um, and for soup, you don't have to be that fussy. I mean, literally, you just bring it in, you can bring it to a boil, put it into the box, and you can come back five, six hours later. When you get in from work, whatever. You haven't had electricity on in the house the whole time you're out, a heat source. Because even with a slow cooker, yeah, electrical things go wrong, you know. I've always used a slow cooker, they're great. I use them all the time, but I prefer using this because I know nothing is going to come to any harm. Um, if you got one with a really good, built one around a really good screw on lid, you could put it in the back of your vehicle and you could you know, drive around all day and you get a hot meal when you get where you're going. I mean, it's really that good. Um, and if, for example, you didn't make one that was as well insulated as this, and when you opened it up, you found that it was cooked, but it was about 65 degrees, you know? there's a theoretical risk to eating cooked meat at that temperature because then it's in the range where you can get, you know, certain pathogens can, can make you ill. Um, do a bit of research around it, do a bit of Googling. Um, but uh, I generally don't worry about it because as I say, it stays hot anyway. But if it did, all you've got to do is bring it up to the temperature again, bring it back up to the simmer, give it five minutes and you're good to go. And it hasn't been quite the saving that you set out to, but you've had to give it, what, five minute heat up at the end. It's really a massive saving. It's great. Um, but it doesn't have to be as fancy as something as this. I also use the same technique when I go backpacking. And this is a litre pot inside a pot cosy made of exactly the same material as you know, the closed cell mat. So this is double thickness. Um, you see, it, very straightforward, very simple, weighs absolutely nothing. It's bulky. That's the only thing. Uh, so, I mean, if you had um, a pot that you really fancy, you could wrap it in another thing. If you haven't got anything that fancy even, people make them out of, you know, insulation that's that basic. You know, it's like, um, it's the same stuff to make windscreen sun protectors from, you know. And really, say if you're cooking something like um, rice, so it's something that doesn't even need a five, six hour cook time. With rice, even if you're doing something like um, a whole grain brown rice or something like that, it takes a fair amount of cooking. You're still only looking, what, 25 minutes of cooking time? It doesn't take that much insulation to keep something hot enough to cook for half an hour to an hour. If you had a handle sticking out, it wouldn't be that big a deal. I mean, you could literally make something that's a basic sleeve and then wrap a t-shirt or something, you know, around the handle and it'll still work pretty well. You know, this is over-engineered because I cook whole roasts in it. Um, the only trouble with this aluminium one is we've got one of them um, fancy electrical hubs at the minute because we're sort of between cookers. Uh, so if I wanted to use this, I'd have to use it with the gas and I try and avoid using the gas if I can. But it's still there and we do still use it. Um, yeah, so that's a hay box. I mean, you can literally still use the old technique as well of uh, just, you know, jamming hay or insulation of any description inside a cardboard box. And as long as it surrounds it well enough and, you know, you seal it up well enough with another box on top, it's going to work pretty well.